Hey, everybody. You're back with Dave and Ed, and this is episode seven of To the Death Podcast. Today, we interview Henzo Gracie Black Belt, Jamie Cruz. Yanni's Grandmaster Sensei. That's right. But in the meantime, I'm sitting around trying to have a conversation with Ed, and it's pointless. I'm bringing up competitors, I'm bringing up popular people in the sport, and he can't keep up because he has no idea who I'm talking about. It's making my head hurt. I need help. But I'm still better than you at jiu-jitsu. I'm not sure that's true because we already had this conversation. Yanni would not say you're technically better because he knows it's a weight advantage. Well, we're doing a match, and the match will decide, and uh, he picked yeah, me sure. in the match. And he's the ref. He did not pick. You need to go back and listen <laughs> to episode four with your Grandmaster Sensei. Whatever, whatever. Today Yanni we talked Hernakis. to Jamie and he, right off the bat. He was a great interview. We had so much fun with this guy. He remembered me in the middle of the podcast, which was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you're always chit-chatting, right? Yeah, well, I'm so talking to me and Jamie had a bunch of conversations. No, this You is know, a- I hear from everyone that... You, they've never heard you talk so much before. This is the most you speak. My, ever. Own, my own mother said it to me. Your mom's listening. She now? just listened the other day, and she said yeah, she couldn't believe it. Hi, mom. She's not gonna. She doesn't like you. Hey, what do you mean she doesn't <laughs> like me? She doesn't know me. She would probably pick me for the super fight. Oh, can we just if bring up the fact? Met. Let's just bring up the fact that the music choice came 50-50 50-50. For the music. Wait a second now. 50-50. 50-50. No, no, don't butts. Don't even tell them. It's 50-50. 50-50. So thank you, Dennis, for the music. <laughs> yeah, well, so what we're going to do this episode, until further notice, we're going to use Rob's for the intro-outro, and then at the end of the podcast, we'll use Dennis's song. If I'm, you would pick- Intro-outro. Isn't that end the outro? The intro-outro. So the intro, and then we end the our talking to the outro- talking and then music do you understand how this works not Dave? a clue no you take care Whatever. of the editing we're process gonna split and you're the, doing a great job we're gonna split the music and then if you guys want to give more feedback you can email comment other ways all that stuff to the death podcast and all you have to say is dennis or rob and then we'll tally it up and then we'll make a decision or if you think you could do better Send it in. That's it. That's right. Send it in. We have a couple of people actually working on stuff, and we are happy to check it out. Is it ready? No. work. I said working okay, on. Okay. Do you listen when I speak? Yeah, yeah, working on. Also, we have art being worked on as well. If you want to do a little sketches, there's some phrases we throw out today, some images we create in your head. Oh, boy, do we. There are some fantastic images you guys are going to be able to put in your head. I've been thinking about it since it was said, and I'm loving it. <laughs> Every day that I see you, I just want to punch you. Why? We should make it up just an MMA uh, fight. MMA? Yeah. I actually thought about that when yeah, you texted me the other day. Oh, my God, that'd be so fun. I don't know if that would. Nobody would sanction it. We could. No, I no, have no. A f- if you put, you make an amateur fight, you wear you, shin guards. It would have to be, you know, it would have to be, you would have to lose weight then. Nobody's going to sanction our weight discrepancy. Uh, how close do we have to be? I don't know. We got to figure it out. I'm going to beat the crap out of you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't strike, though. I don't like striking. Me striking neither. Is a it would just be jiu-jitsu, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, be, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> that's why I don't like combat jiu-jitsu. Do you like combat jiu-jitsu? Uh, I haven't even really watched it. I heard of it. and I just... Did you ever watch EBI? Oh, one time we went to Dwayne's uh, for one of the summer barbecues we do every year, and EBI was on... At who night. was in? Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. You're killing me right now. It was it was cool. I liked it. I wish that you could I wish that I could have a conversation with jiu-jitsu and jiu-jitsu competition with you because there's so many matches that I'd like to discuss with people and, you know, we're going to get stuck into it. I I'll get into it. I just haven't had a chance. I just never did. I never but I want to show you something. All right, you could show me and then we'll watch it and then that's it. Well, I don't know what you want from me. I could all I could do is try. I haven't done it in the past. You're going to hold it against me for the rest of my life? Yes. Do you have any favorite matches from this year? Because this year you no, had to no, be paying no. attention this a little bit, This year I haven't right? watched anything. There's only like six matches for the I whole year. Go watch, watch them all. No, I only watch Worlds. Did you get Flow yet? There is no Worlds this year, so I you're know, not watching so Jiu-Jitsu watch now? No, no, no. I'll watch. I'll watch. When it comes back, they'll start doing tournaments again. I'll watch. Also, tell us who you'd like to have on the podcast. Anyone you want to hear from. Anyone that might be interesting to you. We also learn what Ed's spirit animal is, and I cannot wait for you guys to hear that. That's what I'm talking about. If you want to make uh, some cartoon pictures, it'd be fun. It is fantastic. 
What else? That's I don't it. know. Jamie was a great guest. He was very entertaining. We had a lot of fun with him, and I'm looking forward to having him back again in the future. All right, and there you go. This is To The Death Podcast. Episode 7. All right, we're going here. Are, are we recording? Yeah, yeah. We're already recording. We have All right, so, Jamie, now, since you've been talking to us for a few minutes, are you disappointed? I mean, right off the bat... Of how little Ed knows about jiu-jitsu and judo? Um, I think as far as um, the quality, of, at least from where I've been going with jiu-jitsu, the less you know, the better you are. <laughs> the less you know, the better you are. Oh, See? man. So he's, he's already, right. he already on knows. your side. Already yeah, on your he already side. knows that I'm better than you. He didn't even you. get into it. But now look at the two of us, all right? We have a challenge match coming up. Now just looking at the two of us, whose side would you choose? Oh, and then would man. You, this is my favorite Already. part. This is my would favorite part. Would you corner the, them? The would you separation. corner them or prep them for this fight? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go with. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with Ed on this one. Yes. Oh my! <laughs> is it because of how fat I'm he is? A physical you think he's specimen. just gonna squish me? He, I don't know. Maybe it's the the the. the, the he's got that that. He does look a he little bit like it. a... He can, he can sense, sense it. Like a meteor it. version of Joe D'Arcy. There we go. He I don't can, know who Joe D'Arcy is, but <laughs> oh, that sounds like yeah, a comic book to me. me. He can, like a he, meteor you know, He's clownier. sensing your estrogen. Clownier. That's what it is. He's sensing your estrogen. Maybe <laughs> Joe D'Arcy on estrogen. Oh, okay. Wait. <laughs> Wait, can Maybe. you just fill me in? Who is Joe D'Arcy? Give me just a short so synopsis. Of Joe D'Arcy is, um, my opinion, one of the jiu-jitsu greats that, that came out of Henzo and... Just, just gave everybody just problems. Like, like from the, um, from as far as I can remember, at least uh, you could see some videos on um, Facebook of me training with him, and did a lot of competing, fought in Japan, and definitely back in the day, really developed a name for himself. And one day, when uh, Ed becomes enlightened, he'll he'll feel the wrath of of Joe D'Arcy, possibly, well, maybe now. And uh, he's famous for possibly. Be- Becoming the innovator or the creator um, of the Darce oh, show. Exactly. That makes sense. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Which I'm sure, Ed, you're very well. Aware Actually, of. he has no neck. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do any choke. I don't do any Darce jokes. I do arm bars, and I take the back. Maybe sometimes. Maybe sometimes. Maybe sometimes. I don't really Ed submit Ed, people a lot. Very limited game, but the things he does, he does well. Nice. Well, I come from Yanni, so he showed me half guard and butterfly sweeps back in 2007, and I still do basically that today with a couple extra things <laughs> dave he can't do really anything. I, I, yeah no i'm working i'm still trying i'll the, learn one the day. last podcast uh yanni said basically like uh, he does leg locks that's all he's that's not what he said <laughs> you have to go back and listen people go back and listen he said that i'm better than ed technically but yanni was counting so on, on ed's all right that's wait enough. no he, listen he didn't the say people that need to all. know you're gonna go back and listen he, people. he never listened so you're lying to him right now so let me I'm just lying. Him i'll in. play you a clip okay. we, we also have a show match we're gonna do with me and his son because after i demolish him eventually i'm gonna well how old is your son right now he's nine so he's prepping. <laughs> we're he's prepping ready. eight Training years on. and two months i'll be going against his son and uh, I'm going to dominate him as well as I dominate you. I don't think that's going to happen. Because I already told you, right now, I'm almost 40. Ed's 30, okay? So in nine years, he's going to be my age, and he's going to see what it's like. You're not a young guy. How do you no, deal not. With, with training with the younger guys? It's difficult, right? You have to change your whole entire game, and you have to do a lot of stretching and a lot of yoga and just drink a, an enormous amount of water, I think. I'll and probably have to start the, doing all that. secret. Yeah, you're going to have to yeah, start doing do all that. Yeah, I don't do any of that stuff. Because <laughs> he's going to just, like, <laughs> jump in off the street, and he's just going to be able to put his feet behind his head and he's going to be throwing up attacks and you're going to go wait a so second i'm not even warm yet when you're 40 he'll be about 18 okay. so he's nine right now so 18 so yeah but you know you're gonna have a tough time as a guy that's been <laughs> no hold on as a guy that's been in jujitsu a long time you got some tricks that you don't always pull out but if a special True. occasion came out i'm gonna have those by then right i might be a black belt by then so we'll see what happens <laughs> i don't I, ho- I god i would hope you're how a long black have you been a brown then. belt uh four years almost four years yeah. oh oh <laughs> You know Yanni. Yanni is very strict. Ed takes a lot of layoffs. I take a lot of breaks. He punches oh, okay. me. Okay. Yeah. They, they did. I remember at one time Brown Belt, and again maybe it's changed over the time. But Brown Belt was a very quick belt. Uh, About you know a year, that, right? Yeah, About a year. It's still right. it's still like that. But <laughs> and if you're a long Brown Belt, maybe you know you're not getting it, or I don't I don't know. Maybe, maybe take you know. You take well, Yanni has specifically <laughs> said that he is not going to give Ed his Brown Belt in this current condition, and if he continues taking the layoffs that he does. Well, quickly on black belts. You've given out some black belts. Is there a different criteria besides technique? Do you take other factors into account when you're giving a black belt out? As opposed to like a brown belt 
Well, not a yeah, as opposed to like all the other belts, like maybe a mentality or a humility. As so as the belts get darker and more advanced, um, I start to gradually, not all in one shot. I don't just start doing it at black belt, but I start taking the character into consideration and um, looking at that, not as a be all and end all, but. You know, I, you are getting to know this person, and they are going to be associated with you. So you want to make sure that they are of a similar character of you, not across the board, but similar. You know, you you want to be nice to people. You know, you want to wash your hands after you go to the bathroom. You know, stuff like that. Right. So there's a certain <laughs> like there's more responsibility that comes with each belt. So yes. Yes. Definitely. He, he's just placing that black belt even further out of your <laughs> grasp now. Do you not wash your hands after you go to the bathroom? I do now. <laughs> <laughs> Only because of because of Corona. <laughs> okay, I think we've done enough making fun of me. <laughs> yes. What do you mean? He, all, he sided with you. Could he you sided, imagine if he sided? He with me? He just said that I'm never going to get my black belt. <laughs> I know. Imagine if he sided with me. You'd really. Well, be he doesn't have his black right belt now. either, and he's been a brown belt a while too. So well, yeah, I got my brown belt like a week or two before Ed. Exactly. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're both embarrassments. Let's get I to you, not Jamie an Cruz. Embarrassment. Yes, yes. When did you start Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? I started, so I could say I had two start dates. One was more of a, I'm going to train in the backyard with my friend start date with under no instruction and videos and whatever I could find on WE or WWF or whatever I could find. Um, that was probably 1920. That was probably uh, 93, 92, 93, after, after, about when I graduated uh, high school. And officially... I didn't start going to the Gracie Academy and training under um, some blue belts who were training there. I was at John Jay, 1994. Let's probably say. What so, how did you hear about jujitsu back yeah, then? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so, I went to John Jay College and uh, I was doing Taekwondo, and I didn't really like it. It wasn't the t instructor was great. Everyone, it just wasn't my thing. And after the Taekwondo class was Jujitsu Club, so I would watch and. Uh, I started speaking to some of the guys who were in the club and they told me, you know, why don't you hang out and try it? And I eventually, they took me under the wing. I started doing it. I got good at it. I remember a couple of people, uh, uh, I forgot his first name, George Peterson and Jim Jenya, I think. I think, no, yeah, George Peterson um, were the first two guys who got me going at it. And they were the ones who told me, you know, you should go, start going to Henzo's right down, right 20 blocks down the street in Manhattan. And then from there, it was just, you know, jujitsu. So this, <laughs> All this is very similar to what you went through. Yes, I had a Taekwondo start as well, and right. a coworker of mine knew that I was unhappy, and he suggested that I go see George Cernak. Okay. So awesome. I went over and talked to George, tried a class, and fell in love from there. Yep. But now I have a question with your story. So when you were practicing in the backyard, you mentioned WWF or WWE. Yeah. Were you actually trying submissions, or were you doing like pile drivers and atomic bombs? Uh, a little bit of both. A little bit of both? Uh, yeah, okay. pile drivers with uh, some sort of uh, makeshift submissions. Again, it all pretty much started with the, uh, the UFCs, that first UFC. And then the, the few ones after that, and we would get those videos and we would just, just watch them. You know, there was this one of these guys that was teaching in Clifton. One of my friends started training there. His name was Darren. He started teaching like catch wrestling, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu base wrestling. And he used to come and show me um, what he learned in, his, in, in my backyard, but he was very skinny. So I would always get him in the pile driver. So when you get the Henzo's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so when you get the Henzo's, what kind of class? Is it gi, no gi class? Your first class? Uh, it was pretty. When I first started, I was a day student. It was pretty much all gi. There weren't many no gi classes. I don't even think if yeah, I don't remember. I think Saturdays were no gi. They weren't a lot of no gi classes. It was mostly gi, which I liked. You know, we did it, but it was all it was different. Like it was heel hooks with the gi. Oh yeah, neck cranks with the gi. Like there was no. Oh, what do you mean no heel hooks? Like white belts doing heel heel hooks. You know, twisting ankles with the gi. All right, so, so <laughs> we have a, a running thing here, and it has to deal with heel hooks in the gi. Now, how do you feel about heel hooks in the gi? I still am the same. I, I allow my students to do heel hooks with the gi. I allow white belts. To do, and I know that's not the norm, and I, I do <laughs> consider the other opinion and say, okay, maybe, you know, it's it's the times of change, but... What, you know, it's how I do things. So blasphemy, fantastic, fantastic. Blasphemy. <laughs> Why, Dave? You're not a, a heel hooky guy. He thinks no, it's so dangerous. Oh, I, I these guys so dangerous? can't I do themselves. feel that there is a little bit more. Well, no, Mike's, he's getting upset. He's spitting yeah, all over the mic. <laughs> I'm locking up here. I can't even get it out. What my argument is, uh, there's a path as we learn more and more about mm. the heel hook. Especially John Donaher has been a pioneer for recent heel hooks. The safer we'll get at it. So. 
brown and black belts, I think, can protect themselves. I don't think white belts should be doing heel hooks. Okay. You know, but as you get higher up the ranks, you should know about them, be able to protect them yourself. And I don't see what the problem is. I love heel hooks and I love leg locks. I just feel that they belong no gi. I'm not against them at all. Just <laughs> in now, the gi. why? What, what is the cloth? What, what is the difference? Does the cloth make? Go ahead. It's b- people are just used to at this point training in the gi, and uh, there isn't really a rule set where you can heel hook in the gi. So when you're training, you might not be training properly for whatever your goals are. If you're training, if your your primary objective is MMA or to protect yourself in the street, then maybe yeah, train all submissions. But there's a lot of people that are doing gi competitions, IBJJF. I mean, the only thing that comes to mind is like Gracie Worlds, right? Is it Gracie Worlds where they allow heel hooks in the gi? So there's really not a point to train heel hooks in the gi unless that's your goal. So you think competitions should push all techniques? So See, comp- now that's interesting. If competitions did push all techniques, then I would transition. But still, I prefer no heel hooks in the gi, my personal preference. That's an interesting concept. Competition dictates how you should train. That pretty much sums up what the difference is between judo. Sambo and jiu-jitsu. Really? Yeah, they're all pretty much the same. I mean, you look at judo and jiu-jitsu and just like, okay, I'm looking at which book now? If you look at, if I gave you a book, a judo, hey, right. and, and took out judo and jiu-jitsu, you wouldn't know which book was which, you and, know? And I could throw in, okay, this is no gi, and then say, okay, that's really Sambo now, you know? Well, what's the real difference? The rules of the competition, so that's, I never thought about that. And you know the rules because what belt are you in judo now? Uh, brown belt. Brown so, belt and judo. Yeah, and yeah. F- for, technically, are you fourth degree yet, or did you not get that degree put on your black belt yet? And what's the technicality? No, I, yeah, I, I'm technically a third degree. I have not had the fourth degree put on. But you're, yet, so. it's, you're due, because you were supposed to have gotten it. By yes, well, two years ago overdue. Okay. So we'll just let that out. All right. we'll just let that, that, we, that we can leave on there. I'm not going to argue about that one later. So <laughs> since we bring up the rules of competition... Ed has a few theories that maybe we could get your opinion oh, on. I love theories. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> we want to do our own show match. We're going to make our own rules. A rule that I've been trying well, to we push. We said IBJJF, but continue. Oh One of the rules I've been trying to push for a long time is when you take the back, I think once you have an over-under grip okay. or seatbelt grip, you should get two points per hook because if you even have one hook, you're very dangerous on the back. What do you think about that? I like it. It, it does make it interesting, but it is a, it's a little getting to the point of um i'm not going to say um some grappling organizations encourage the attempted submission as points okay um that's to me that's an opinion okay okay so i kind of could see you know you get one hook in how do how long do we have to leave it in there do three seconds three just seconds? like a regular and you um, have to be chest to back and hip to hip so their back can't be kind of falling off you it's got to be a, no, okay. a sometimes position. people will just fight off that last hook like no no points <laughs> It's a good idea, but it might give, like, because the back and the mount already kind of, you know, warrant a competitor to kind of, like, work the score system. You know, if you, like, you know you're not going to submit the guy, but you just want to just inundate him with points, you could just mount and take the back on someone and get, like, you know, after a while, it's like, what is this turning right, into? Right, right. You know, I, I feel that. But, you know, that is the the, the point of the game is a uh, uh, positional control. So... That's going to be hard to judge. Poor Yanni on that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about this one? This one's a little more cut and dry. I think I'm, I have a little more oomph with this one. Crucifix, one point. I think Crucifix. two points. I said one. Let's just see okay, how it feels about one point. One. Crucifix we is a very dangerous agree. position. Maybe I don't even know if you get an advantage for getting somebody in a crucifix, but this Arms, is very I totally advantage. isolated. I say advantage. Is no it points, a, yeah, though. Yeah, no points. No points. I, 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 again, it's such a – you don't see it a lot. Like, you know, if it warranted points, I think you would just see it more. Maybe that's true. Do you see Crucifix a lot? I, yeah, because it's one of my favorite positions. I love it. I know. You, I mean, you hit it a lot. You get it. You get I do, yeah. And you control people. He's yes. not good. Don't okay. listen to I him. get it. He's <laughs> getting white belts in a big deal. I got a lot of white belts in the Crucifix. <laughs> white belts, look out. I'm coming for I'm you. I'm coming for that Crucifix. <laughs> so you're not keen on either of my rules here. What about this? We were okay. thinking about doing the match where. Say I don't I, like this one. Hold on. <laughs> I'm probably going to submit him in probably 45 seconds. So that's is this gi or no gi? Gi. Okay. So heel hooks? Heel hooks? He said I could heel he hook could do him, whatever he wants. Oh, oh, oh okay. All right, all right. But he, I'm going to finish him real quick. It'll be a little anticlimactic. So I was right. thinking we do submissions equal 10 points. So the match keeps going. So it goes at least maybe. Oh, I, okay. I like that idea. So you, There we go. So, so, Ed so is, he, you could submit him like, like a couple of times and he might still win in the end. Right. Like he could get back. Sure. Okay. No, because no, there's no way to submit Ed. Out of everyone that you okay. ever talked to. Ed is You're, unsubmittable. That's my superpower. I'm not good at anything like that. else. That's yes. a, <laughs> he, you can get points on him. You can score. But, I mean, who submitted it? When was the last time you were submitted? I get submitted by Yanni every role that I do with him. But, but, by Yanni. Yeah. Yanni alone. Third degree black belt. Continue. But, Jamie, 
I got that because of Derek Doyle. When okay. I was a white belt and blue belt, he used to brutalize me. He used to neck crank me and just do every submission. So I would. Didn't you come to the school once? Didn't you? Come oh, I've come. Before? We've met before. I, I, yes, I know <laughs> who you are. I know you're a police officer. No, I'm not a police officer. No. Firefighter. Okay. Oh, okay. Where? In Newark. Okay. All right. I definitely remember. The voice. What, what got it? The voice. Yeah, that the finally, I've been talking it about. A while. It's because <laughs> you've been listening. It's because you've been listening to the podcast. Jamie is a big fan of everyone. He's slow rolling Or maybe this. he just chats too much. I don't know. <laughs> no, he doesn't talk if so, he's not on the podcast. Right, right. So, Jamie, the reason that you wouldn't really remember is because I we haven't really interacted much because I see you kind of as like a general in the army, like chain of command. Oh, wow. Thank you. Like, Yanni is... Like a colonel, right. I'm like a private, so I can go up the chain of command to Yanni, but I can't go past him because that's against the rules. So that's why we haven't really <laughs> <laughs> interacted as much as we should have. <laughs> Dave doesn't get that because he doesn't know anything about the military. Continue. I don't need, I don't need to. Let's get back. Let's get back. I think we talked about yeah. his jujitsu for like about a second. Let's go back to 1990. But that's 1994. Good. So after college, after I started, they had like a uh, rumpus room, like a matted room that we used to just roll around on, and we had, we wore the geese. And I started going to the, the Penzo Academy after that. I was very fortunate. And I just, it was worked out in my schedule perfectly. So I was able to train, um, you know, got my blue belt, started training in other places closer to home because it was very cumbersome and expensive, especially after college. How long did know? it take you to get your blue belt? Oh, two years. Two years? Yeah, it took me a long time. And it, it was very... That's it, not that long. It took me three. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but I was training like a maniac and I was beating up a lot of blue belts and... Then a lot of those blue belts were, were, you know, getting purple belts. And I was just like, you know, what am I not going to the right classes? But it all comes. You so know? do you think you attribute to more like you were training like hard, hard, hard? Or was it like kind of come natural to you? You kind of picked it up a little definitely, quicker? That, a lot of it definitely came natural to me. Uh, I never, I mean, again, I, the, the training hard was more of I just, I loved it so much. And the paranoia that I was getting worse every minute that I passed <laughs> by when I, I'm sure you guys all get that. Oh yeah, oh, for yeah. sure. Every, I'm like, I'm getting worse right now. I got to get on the mats. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the nearest mats? Because I can corroborate Yanni and George both said you were a killer back then. Like people awesome. are always talking highly yeah. about you from the beginning, I guess, even before they even started training, you were killing people. Yeah, I, I uh, definitely. I, I had some very natural athleticism too, and I, I still do, and some uh, physical attributes. I have very, you know, large gripping hands. A lot of people tell me so. When I grab it, it's like a meaningful grab. So now let's go back to Ed, who has no physical attributes. <laughs> whoa, 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 right? <laughs> if on, you compare on. you and Ed, you sided with Ed. But if Ed yeah. was to stand no. up, he yeah. looks like a dumpling. All right, all right. Okay. I got a little. He has I got a little, little hands, and he has size seven feet. Hold on. He can barely hold the Dela Hiva hook. Feet. Here we go. <laughs> Listen, he just explained me. Him, me, and Jamie have a very similar kind. Oh, of Are thing. you trying to say you're two and one now? What do you mean two and one? Two peas in a pod. Kind of. I mean, no. you always say, like, when Do I grab him, we joke around, but when I grab him, if he breaks the grip, it's because I let him break the grip. He, we, I'm very weak. <laughs> no, no, but people have said that to me, and even you have said that in the I past. Know, he always tells strong. me about how strong I am, even though I'm not that strong. I will I will give a, a truth about myself that a lot of people won't believe. I probably couldn't do five pull-ups. All right, that's where we're a little different. I could do pull-ups. But I he's cannot. strong. He's got the grip strength. I am very this, weak. <laughs> And when it comes to that, part. but ha but do people often tell you like even back then like oh you're too yes. strong or stuff? Very, Don't you hate that? that? Yes. Why are they always I, I doing that? Not at all. Brazilians used to tell me that. And uh, how early did you go to uh, Brazil? I went to Brazil one time when I was I went with Nick. I went with Matt's brother, uh, Nick Sarah. Um, how, I was in my late twenties. Uh, I think it was like two thousand in the two thousand. I was pro belt, so it was probably late nineteen nineties, nineteen ninety nine or something like that for for two weeks. Um, it was amazing. So much fun, amazing training, amazing people, amazing culture. Um, you know, what a great time. I recommend it. for If you ever can get to Brazil, get to Brazil. You know, anytime. So what made you come back? Why didn't you stay there? I, I missed it. I, I wanted a hamburger, you know, without <laughs> no. mayo on it. <laughs> you know? Or I worry that I wouldn't come back. <laughs> yeah, it's just I was so – there's certain things you just miss that come the amenities of, of America. And I, I – Really missed like the hamburger was one huge thing, and just being able to order my food without it having to be a you a translator think, or something. No, I didn't. Yeah, exactly. I told her two different sandwich was a debacle, you know, like for me. And but so, how did you know that the people were calling you too strong? They were translating to you like this guy. Yeah, some <laughs> they would say and they would say in broken English, and eventually I understand. Uh, th 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 there was a word in Portuguese that I understood was like force. I forget. I forget it probably was forza or something like that. I don't remember what it was. 
But I knew that as, oh, he just said I was strong. <laughs> so you've trained in Brazil. Have you ever trained anywhere else in the country here? Um, let me think. Of Vegas, uh, Florida. Yeah. So um, do you feel that Brazil is still like the capital of Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Is there a need to go to Brazil now? Or if you're looking for high-level hey, jiu-jitsu, can you just... You know what? If you're going to do Brazilian jiu-jitsu, do try to get to Brazil. Okay. That, that's I would really recommend that because it's such an amazing experience and you really understand i honestly think i, I really started to understand more jujitsu when i started to meet with the people who you know kind of brought it, everything together and now i'm just curious where did you go in brazil uh i went to rio i, I hope i don't screw up the name of the um that's close enough that's <laughs> no baja de juca i think okay it was and just it was in a suburb of rio and that's where uh Gracie Baha is, and I think the gym it w was called, and I'm sure someone will correct me somewhere in this. On your, if you have like a common area, <laughs> we'll es we leave them out. Esposa Vital, I think it was called. Um, I don't know what that means. Do you I don't know. What that know. Means? No. Yeah, no. Who was coaching? Who was training down? Uh, it was Carlinos Gracie, Masio Fetosa. Uh, there were a couple of Machado brothers there when I was there, which was pretty cool. And I can't remember who else. And I'm drawing a blank, and it, it's it's. You know, people I should know. It's just been a while. <laughs> so when you went down there, were you doing like classes? Was it like ro just rounds rolling, rolling? Or how, what was it se the setup? Both. Like? It was classes. They have classes all uh, pretty much all throughout the day. They have a morning class. They after, I think they had a class before and after lunch, like a early afternoon class and a late afternoon class. And then they had a night class. So you could go whenever. So I would just, you know, whatever I did the night before, I always catered. If I woke up, I went to the day class. And you could go. They have these, you know, mat sessions. They were like oh, what you would call an open mat. I don't know what they call it there. And then after, everyone goes to, like, loft or goes to the beach, which is, like, right down the street. And, you know, then maybe you train twice, two or three times a day. Man, that's fantastic. You know? Yeah, it that was does the, sound It great. was the life. It was the did classes start on time? Yeah, they wow. did. They, they, they did. I mean, they, they ran a tight ship there, I, from what I remember. And, again, I... I can't even remember like how it really like I didn't have a, I didn't have a cell phone so did I I wasn't really a big watch guy, you know so but it wasn't like when you come to America and you train at a school here where it's around Brazilian time where they start like <laughs> that's why I asked <laughs> twenty five thirty minutes later. did they have air conditioning no they had fans <laughs> but was, you didn't really I I'm not a big fan of air conditioning training in general um, I do think you should try to get away as much as you can with fans and open air. Rather than closing everything and putting the air conditioner on. This is exactly why Yanni does it. Well, if, it. Yeah, so Yanni and I are similar that way. I never turn the air on here, right. but I never open the doors either. You it's should like open a hot the doors. Open the door. no, no, doors. Come on. No, we get open tough doors in at here. The end. Oh, t I agree, but op open the doors to get some air in, air the place out a little bit. After <laughs> class is over, yeah. after everyone's done, yeah, but while we're training, mm -hmm. Uh, we're we're toughening up in here. He's acting like he's got like competition, world class people. He's got all I white do. belts in here. Give him a break. World Most of them are just, white belts. They're not in great shape yet. Be world class. They're, they're, what do you mean? Everybody that comes through this door is getting in great shape. What Remember. about me? <laughs> You're the exception. There always has to be an exception to the rule. There always is. <laughs> so you were talking about getting your purple. Belt. Let's go to blue belt. So okay. what year do you think you got your blue belt? Uh, blue belt definitely um, ninety six, maybe ninety seven. So when you started, uh, when you were a blue belt, did you start to pull people aside, maybe work on technique with them? Like, did you know you want to start teaching, or were you just head down trying to I get better? I always would try and get, hey, let's go over moves. I would drill moves on my porch in the winter, like with my brother <laughs> if I could, but he wouldn't have any of that. Um, as far as knowing I was teaching, I was, you know, a lot of people would ask me, hey, can you show me this? Can you show me that? Um, it wasn't really until like purple belt, and I always had this uh, gentleman named Gene Dunn. It was always in my ear. A very uh, big mentor in my life as far as you know achievement and accomplishment said you know you could t always told me you could make this a career you know and I'm just like you're out of your mind dude I'm just having a good time I'm a kid you know I'm just you know this is fun and um, he you know he said it to me a few times and you know it starts to stick with you and and he was right and then Purple Belt was when I s really saw this I saw other people you know who who I were at teaching and training at the time um, opening up their schools and getting started. I'm like, dude, I, if they can do it, I can do it. Wow. So, so that guy had a lot of wisdom. What is his yes. name again? Gene Dunn. Gene, Gene Dunn. What is his name again? Oh, got, my I'm God. I'm trying to pay Ed, attention. Please. I'm learning yes. here. Can you give me a break? Check At least I'm trying. Yeah, this is Judo Gene, right? Yeah, Judo Gene. It's, All right, so... Uh, no, no, no. Not, no? not Gene LaBelle. Oh, I'm uh, oh, see, now he's messing <laughs> up. No, I'm messing up. Way to go. I caught that. Oh, my God. I've been hearing about this guy forever, too, though. 
<laughs> Gene Dunn. Yes. The reason why I'm saying that is because back then, how many schools in Jersey were there before when he said that? Uh, well, he had Shotokan karate schools, but um, well, I, I could see him seeing that vision because he was already in the business, and I think he already knew that this was going to be, uh, this is going to be the next phase of martial arts. And, and you got to, if you want to teach martial arts, you got to start learning this. And here he is watching, you know, this kid's doing what I'm doing. You know, I'm doing this to learn it so I can teach it to my students. You know, so he's definitely going to be a teacher. I did not have that foresight, you know, and um, you know, he's someone I looked up to. Someone who's been in the business for a long time. He helped me get better at jiu-jitsu. He's the reason why, because I got triangled from him so many times. <laughs> he's the reason why I, I have uh, an amazing triangle defense. And I think it has to work like that. The only way to get good at jiu-jitsu is you have to just get just defeated. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's, a per that's a perfect example of the importance of mentors. Yeah. Because Yanni's like that for me. Just a, If I didn't have Yanni, I don't even know if I would still be training. It's this sad that's that okay. Ed's like that for me. <laughs> I'm not a mentor to you. I'm just a, a bully. Uh, like so a, now, a punching bag. Yeah, you, he's my punching yeah. bag. No, you're my he's, punching bag. He can bag. see it. He just. What are you talking about? <laughs> you're going to have to come to class and watch. Uh, tell, tell Jamie how many times you tapped me in the last 10 years. In the last Once? 10 years? Last 10 years. Once? That many not times. Zero. Oh, zero. Zero times. He's untappable. I want to see you tap him, Jamie. He can tap um, me I have easy. a gi here. <laughs> you ready to go? <laughs> no, right today. after this. <laughs> so leaving. now, you're talking about. Uh, Gene mentoring you as a purple belt and telling you you could make a career White of this. White belt. I mean, he started from day one. He was one of the first people I met. Okay. Training there. He took me under his wing immediately. You know, he understood that, you know, we're only as good as the as the worst person here. And he said, okay, that's the worst person. Jamie, come here. Let me talk to you. you know <laughs> <laughs> Let me help you out, you know? So, you know, that's how, that's how I think about, you know, in my classes, like when someone new comes in, I'm like, we got to get this guy up to speed. You know, we got, everyone needs to, Focus on this guy and get him learning this so he can help us, you know? And <clears throat> when did you start actually teaching classes? Formally, I started teaching as a purple belt at uh, Bergenfield with uh, Ace Ramirez, I want to say late 90s, 98, 99, got a brown belt there. Moved a program to Closter, um, was teaching um, at a gym a uh, friend of mine, Dave Paladino, and then from there started teaching at uh, AMA. And then I started getting into teaching fighters and um, I guess maybe maybe got into more gi oriented, but then that brought me back to the gi again. So I always kind of, I, I, I want to say I started out as a, uh, a gi guy, then I went to more no gi, did a lot of, comp then back to the gi, then back to no gi, and now I, with the judo, probably I'm... I'm Maybe I'll do nogi every now and then, twice a week. So let's go back to the early days. When did you start competing in jiu-jitsu? Competing pretty early. Um, I knew I want that was something I wanted to get out of the way pretty quickly. And they did have one of the first tournaments. I think it was called the New York City Grappling Challenge. And also, in I want to say that was like 96. So I, I, I don't know if I got my blue belt yet. And um, from there, just you know, started competing locally. Uh, maybe New York State, Connecticut, Manhattan... I don't think they were coming to Jersey and then got a, a sponsorship tribe fight where Chris Severis and we just started going to Vegas doing grapplers quest. Um, you know, just having a good time, just going pretty much anywhere we could, you know, it was mostly Vegas cause he, we always had the best time in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> so you're trying to get out to Vegas. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do have any excuse to go out to Vegas. So you got a sponsorship pretty early in jujitsu. I mean, you must've been doing pretty well in these tournaments. Yeah, it was quick. Again, there weren't a lot of good guys back then. It was just getting started, but, but yes, uh, we, we did very well. We got, I got a name for myself. I want to kind of call it the, you know, the Lords of Dogtown. you know, like we were the best at the time, you know, and we developed it. But look what we created. Do you know what he's talking about? Dog I don't have a clue. No. <laughs> skateboarding. Skateboarding. Tony Hawk was just on Joe Rogan. Who? <laughs> you know who Tony Hawk is. I know who Tony Hawk is. Relax. <laughs> you know, like, you don't hear about these guys now. They were the innovators. They were the creators. But when you see what they created, like, when you see, like, the good skateboarders now are just, like, I mean, even just the extreme sports, just the skiing on the half pipe is just incredible. Like, like where they took it, you know, is just, you know, amazing. And then to see it go back to the roots. So now that's interesting how you're just talking about the evolution of skateboarding. How do you feel about the evolution of jiu-jitsu? Uh, <laughs> um, it depends on, on are you, like competition jiu-jitsu or... I would probably just say yes to make things easy. Okay. Uh, I do think it, it is going a little um, differently 
to how I was taught as far as this is a self-defense position does matter and being on top is important and um, you should only be on bottom if you kind of have to. And I know that's funny for me to say that because if you look at my videos, I pulled guard you know, a lot, you know, and I didn't want to. I didn't have the greatest takedowns. And, um, you know, that's kind of why I implemented judo. But uh, at the at the same time, he's my spirit animal. I, I'm listening to him, and he's talking about me. That's what he's talking about. I, I, I yeah. pull guard in Your every competition I've ever done. Pig, all right? Maybe Relax. I got to get into Let judo now. Finish. But uh, also, I would pull guard to sweep. I would pull right. guard. That's my way. I'm going to get. If I can't take you down, then I'm going to pull guard. And I'm going to try and get on top that way. Right. But I wanted to. My end game was to get on top, so I can kill you. That's exactly my thing. I don't. Yes, that's I what Ed does. Yeah, he gets I on top <laughs> and then just uses all of his weight and lays there. <laughs> I don't ever finish on Ed, bottom. We're the same. We, we're, we're the same. I don't like are. to finish from bottom. I think it's a waste of time. We got to get on top. But my yes. only way on top is and to later. pull and sweep. You know, yeah. we got to get half there. Guard, he pulls, goes pull. to half guard, sweeps. Stalls. I don't stall. I pass the side mount. Stalls. Then I saw. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can really lay on you in side mount if you let me. So then, Jamie, you're not playing uh, any lapel guards or worm guard, any of that stuff? Uh, no, because um, I tried worm guard, and I think I hurt myself one time. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's different, and I don't want to call anyone out, but when it becomes about contortioning and doing things that unless you can, and, uh, Gracie told this to me, unless you can teach this to everyone, it's, it's not a martial art. Like if there's something about it, and that's why I really try to, to look at my moves and say, is this an athleticism? Are you getting this move with an athleticism that only you have? And really evaluate. And if it is, then I got to kind of either change the move so that everyone can do it or kind of throw it out of the arsenal and say, okay, I, I really shouldn't be doing this anymore. That's uh, really humble because you were just saying that you had the athleticism yes. and you could you could cheat if you wanted, but instead you're trying to really make sure everybody could do That's it. That's very difficult to do because you're almost fighting with yourself, which is you do a lot of already. Every time I roll with Dave, <laughs> I got I to gotta stop myself from cheating because it's so easy to dominate him. You know, so it's <laughs> I can't wait till our challenge match. So, Jamie, will you I'm prep me and coming. get me ready for the challenge I, match? Hold on, I, hold on. You know what? I'm going to play both sides. I'm going to get you both ready. There we uh, go. I like that better. I like this. Okay. <laughs> you guys can use the space here to get them ready. Eye in the sky will let me know what you're working no, we'll on. We'll do our training at Yanni's. And there we I'll go. Come here and I'll, I'll train you. Yeah, because Yanni can't train him. He's a referee. And then and then I'll coach you both. <laughs> just start. <laughs> yeah, don't don't say who you're directing yeah. to. Just start just shouting start out instructions. Yeah, we got to figure it out. things out. <laughs> We're going to make this a big spectacle. Everybody's right. enjoying this. I told so you we should sell tickets and do it live. We're not selling tickets. Come on. People, it, we don't deserve to be watched that much. It's going to be fun, though. It's going to be fun. It's, it's like a fun. comedy act. You go to see it fall apart. <laughs> I think if you could put it online and sell like tickets, I think that that. that. <laughs> All right. Let's get back to uh, when Yanni was saying that he, you were teaching him was mm. in Bergenfield. So can you tell us about the Bergenfield days? Bergenfield, um, boxing gym, Ace Ramirez's school. A um, lot of no, lot of no gi, and it was a lot of wrestling. So, um, yeah, H was there. I remember that he used to come, and those, those. Uh, did you want to fight ever? Was that ever a goal of yours? Okay, so I did train for two MMA fights, and that was around that time too. Uh, each one that um, I trained for, I trained very hard for. Something always happened. Uh, I think one I got injured, and um, the other one. I think the venue got canceled because it was something out with a, um, I forget what the venue was called, but it was on some Indian reservation. And the chief of, this is a bizarre story, the chief of the Indian reservation ended up dying that week or something oh. like that. So they had to cancel the whole thing. And after that, I, I you know, after, you know, it's hard. You yeah. have nothing to look forward to. It's, a, it's, a, it's a really not for everybody to, to be training and, and just grueling and getting hit in the face and the jammed fingers and the, and the, 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 the teeth that get knocked loose, I mean, are you gonna, is that teeth going to heal or are you going to lose your teeth? You know, it's just a, a lot. So I focused more on, um, I really like submission grappling. And, um, you know, I think um, I'm already ugly enough, so I don't think <laughs> I need to get hit in the face anymore. <laughs> Do you still train any striking? Very little. Um, I do uh, a little bit of boxing and some basic Muay Thai. One of my um, old Muay Thai associates now lives up by me, so I'm probably going to be looking to get some lessons in with him. And I've done some boxing in the past, but I do think striking holds uh, a place in martial arts, but I do tend to like the uh, no striking hands-on approach as far as like controlling someone 
And uh, and I really look at this as a, a martial arts. That's why I did this. I did this to learn how to protect myself. Sure. Okay. A couple of my students to remember uh, Raphael Gray and Gerard Writings were, were two of the um, very tough guys who still train with me today, and they pushed me incredibly. And they they have a lot to do with. And again, I could go on this list of people who made me the um, grappler that I am today. But that the list is long. But them from the Bergenfield days, them too. Again, Yanni definitely. You know his approach to jiu-jitsu you know, you could just really take a look at and it's awe-inspiring to this so fluid, so water. Did you notice that he had something different towards his training mentality? Did you notice it right away? or Who, was Yanni? It Yanni, yeah. Yeah, because uh, it's just, it, it, it's your personality. You know, it, it, and then again, you can see like everyone, you know, if I see like someone who's, maybe they're nervous, maybe they're a little skittish, that's how they're going to train. And it might really, it's like, dude, jiu-jitsu is amazing. But it's nervous and skittishy, you know. Yanni's really calm and really chill, and that translates to his his jujitsu. And it's like almost like, and a lot of people say like, when I train, I have like no like my have the face of no emotion, and that's him, you know. Like whether he's you know on top of you or you're on top of him, you know, he's pretty much got the same look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> what would you attribute that to? That's just his personality, or could people like build that towards that mentality? Uh, I think it has a lot to do with your your disposition and demeanor. As you are, your coach, I think I'm a lot that a lot like that. And it's also, you know, what you're looking for in jiu-jitsu. Some people are looking for calmness in jiu-jitsu. Some people are looking for fight or flight in jiu-jitsu. You know, and also that has a lot to do with what are you looking for. Right. So if you're like an MMA fighter, you're more abrasive and trying not to. True. But yes, I do agree. But you also do have that calm, chill MMA guy who's just going to be like, dude, is this guy sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And he's kicking the crap out of this guy. <laughs> But you know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, Where yeah. it looks like they're, they're not even, you sure, know. Sure. <laughs> Those are the scariest guys. Yeah. You don't know what's going on in their head. You don't, Like if you're trying to choke them, you don't even know if it's going well. Yeah, exactly. Not <laughs> There's no reaction. There's nothing. <laughs> All right, so let's get, so we're at Purple Belt. So how long were you at Purple Belt for? Uh, I want to say Purple Belt and Blue Belt were probably at least three or four years, if not more. Um, that was probably my favorite belt, I want to say. Brown Belt was just very quick. Um and black belt is forever, so. Yes, forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, Pearl Belt was you have no expectation. No one has any expectations of you. And, you know, you can go in there and have no expectations of yourself. If you get your ass kicked, you know, it's usually going to be by either another Pearl Belt or a brown or black belt. You know, if it's by a blue belt, you hope he's probably pretty good. <laughs> but, um, you know, and that you're okay with it. You can go home and be like, that's fine. I'm just a Pearl Belt, you know. But if you kick someone's ass, you know, it's like, okay, too. You don't have to feel guilty about it, you know, or you don't have to feel like, um, like, say, if you're a blue belt, you know, and you're wrecking everyone, you're just like, should I really be a blue belt? You know, you always have that question and vice versa. You know, if you're if you're another belt and you're getting wrecked, you know, people are very hard on themselves and they, they use that as like a gauge. Like, so you're saying that when you got your black belt, there was kind of more of a, a weight or more of a target? Not when I first got it, but once, okay, once you start developing a name and once really people start looking at you and critiquing you and commenting you, you do, you know, start to think, well, you know, I got to, you know, be the best that I can be. And, uh, you know, there's a little bit of stress, you know, on, on what, and then as you get a little older, then that kind of goes out the window either. Cause it's just like, well, now I'm old. So that, that probably that mentality kind of <laughs> yeah, comes, yeah, comes back. back. You yeah, got yeah. it back full circle. <laughs> I don't know about full circle. It's always, <laughs> it's kind of like a, a double edged sword, right. you know? Well, you were one of the first guys, first Americans to get your black belt in this area. Yes. So one of Henzo's first. Yes. Black belt. And, so when you're competing and you're one of these first people to have to deal with these kind of criticisms and the stress, did that affect like your training at all? Did it make you train more, train less? I would say train more. I would say um, definitely motivated me to train more and train harder. Um, I want to say it might have made me a little gun shy in certain competitions uh, because I was afraid that you know something wasn't going to work. Uh, and I can remember a couple instances. Um, where I was like that, where, you know, what are they going to say if it didn't work, you know, or if I do a specific type of strategy against this person, maybe I'll choose something else because, you know, I didn't believe that that was going to work and how, you know, why did Jamie do that? That's not his style, you know, that kind of thing. Right. So I have a kind of two part question at this point. We'll just say from Purple Belt on, were you still competing regular and were you still training in the city or with Henzo? directly uh yeah definitely purple belt 
brown belt, black belt. I got my black belt in the city. Uh, I continued training after um, and still competing. Pro belt, black, brown belt, and black belt. Yeah, I would say I, I pretty much competed. You know, the only question is, did I compete as a white belt? Did I have my blue belt or not? I might have not have competed at a white belt. But other than that, I'm pretty sure I competed. I competed at blue belt, pro belt, brown belt, and black belt. Well, that's understandable because back then there wasn't tournaments every week or right. every month going on. Like uh, George was saying, there was like a tournament maybe twice a year. Right, exactly. Exactly. And if you wanted to do more than that, you'd have to travel. You'd so have to go to- how do you feel about competition? Like, do you feel like to get your black belt, you should have a certain amount of competition training or is that not important? I think everyone is is through rigorous training is entitled to a, their black belt or their recognition that they are an expert in the martial art and i don't think there should like i don't agree that someone oh you have to compete to get a to get this belt um everyone's different and uh everyone's going to have abilities and everyone's going to have different disabilities and there's going to be reasons why they're not going to do certain things whether it's real or not whether they have it in their mind or or it's a it's a real functional thing maybe it's a logistical thing or you know maybe they live in like you know zimbabwe you know and they just there's no competitions i don't know if that's still the case anymore but um you know and that's one of the thing reasons why i encourage like the gracie university you know the, the guys giving their you know because you've got that's the only way this is going to get spread spread it around you know it's the only way it, it's it's going it's going to get big I deviated a little bit. What is, what no, no, that's right. So the competition. So they don't have to do competition, but don't you? Would you agree that competition kind of supercharges you, gives you? Um, I you definitely get better faster. Okay, I will encourage. Yeah, oh, definitely. It definitely gets you better faster, and I definitely will encourage you to compete. But I'm not going to say I will never ever say you, you're not going to get your black belt unless you compete. That's not true. You can get your black belt without competing mm-hmm. under me, and you know I'm not going to have any opinion about it. But if you want to learn something about yourself, and if you want to learn how you are going to react in a real panic situation and if you wonder if this is going to work when when it matters then you should compete i agree with that yeah that's yeah, great yeah. that's well yeah. very well put. oh you're not going to disagree with that <laughs> no not at all i really like the way that he put that i'm going to try and remember it so i can use that line later on <laughs> Even if he loses all the time, it's still good for him to compete, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and, I find out a lot about myself. Oh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I'll never give up, Ed. Well, I haven't given up either. I take breaks, but I'm always coming back. No, I mean, so... I, Have it, you guys competed? Oh, yeah. I've competed. Like, yes. I've, I've about won as many as I lost. Maybe 35 matches. Not that many total. Oh, that's, my, that's all extent. That's a lot. That's you've, yeah. th- you've, you've competed 35. And my claim to fame is I've never been submitted in competition. Okay. But I'm a loser, though. It's I've, because he's very <laughs> difficult to submit. I get, Jamie I've, and you are going to roll after this is over. I've been, yes. be, I've been beaten 24 to <laughs> 0, so I'm, I'm not saying I'm that that's good. That's tough. You <laughs> yeah. know, that, that, that. <laughs> I've taken some real beatings on the mat. What about you? Yeah, I've competed a, okay. a lot, yes. Um, I actually, so this is interesting. Maybe I can get your perspective on it. As I've gotten older, I don't like competing as much. When I was younger and I didn't have yes, responsibilities, definitely. I really loved it. But now I have kids and a family. Right. I find it it's much more, causes much more stress on me to compete. I would definitely agree with you on that. Yeah, because I tried to compete in judo. I did the U.S. Open down in Florida, and that was a uh, a big bite to do. You know, it's an international uh, tournament where I'm going against other black belts who've been doing judo for like 30 years. And I brought my whole family, you know, I brought, well, not my, my, my wife and my kid, it's just, I, we just have a daughter, but that was tough. You know, we, I think I thought it would be fun, you know, and then I got my, I, I got thrown like three times in a row and I got my uh, bad AC separation and uh, it was fun up until that, but you know. Jamie, I got to tell you, you are a madman. <laughs> I, judo is, yeah. you got to be the toughest guy ever to do judo. It's, it's it's a brutal, brutal it, sport, and you're yes. going to jump into it. <laughs> That's I, so dangerous. The goal is to break someone by <laughs> using the earth. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I did say, what are you getting into? And I have had my, you know, I know, and I understand how it is for adults who are in their 30s, who have careers and children and want to do jujitsu and have someone say that's, you know, put them down or say, you know, that's silly. Why would you be doing that? Why would you want to risk injury or risk, uh, you know, and... To me, I, I almost it was something that you ha- you have to do this. It's like a thrill of the battle, like pushing yourself, testing yourself, or no? You get ner- um, were you nervous before doing these? So tournaments? there's no other. To me, that's my next step. That's my weakness. Like as far as martial arts, if, if, if I'm looking for martial arts, almost like a perfection. Like I'm looking to to build a machine or or sharpen a sword. You know. So my issue was I was not good at 
you know, I could get a single leg, double leg, but I had problems going to the ground and, and transitioning. So that was really, and I was also, it was also put in front of my face so many times where you'd be a fool not to do judo. If you turn this down again, you know, you, you, you're, you're, God is putting this in front of you over and over and over again for a reason. So, and I saw that like that too. Like there's gotta be the, a reason why this is happening. So I have to do this. That's so, not the safe know. choice though. <laughs> no, I know. I know. And especially where I am, like, like, uh, you know, uh, Sensei Kamal, the Kodokan uh, regiment is very difficult at, at his school, you know, and I'm very honored, but it, it's, the, you know, when you won the lottery of, of learning judo, you have to take it in, in my opinion, which pretty much, I mean, I, 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 that's where I look at it. Well, can we go back to competition? I just had a thought. This is another thing. Guys on the feet have been stalling matches very easily because you're allowed to back up and kind of right, surround so the ring. What do you think about this rule change? Because in wrestling, you're not allowed to back up at all. Or else you get a penalty. What if you're not allowed to take a step backwards while standing in jiu-jitsu? I think that's a good a step in the in the semi-right direction. Uh, they should do something about that because they do that in judo. You're not allowed to um, say if a guy tries two attempts and you do nothing and then he tries a third and you, you're just like, def you know, just all defensive and passive. They give you a penalty. They'll stop the match, and they give you it's like a, a dis like a disadvantage of jujitsu, like a minus advantage right. or something like that. Um, I think if it's obvious, I think they should start doing that. I think they did that in Abu Dhabi, or they used to do that in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, Abu Dhabi's got a little bit different rules. Do they have like a, a, a? Well, Abu Dhabi is they have a strange rule set where for the first five minutes there are no points, and then for the second five minutes there's no guard pulling. If you pull guard, it's a negative point. So okay. they're, they're really trying to encourage. Yeah. What about what about a point? If you if I pull guard on you, you get one point. Because right now it's just it's not, it's nothing. No, there's nothing. Yeah, for a double guard pull, if you stand up, it's an advantage. So you pull guard on me, and I get a point. Yeah. What did I do to get that point? You scared me. <laughs> <laughs> your, your ferocious so was, judo scared me. I have all right weird thoughts right on this, time. but remember what we're doing. We're practicing jujitsu, and when we're practicing sport jujitsu, the goal is to do this on the ground, right? I get it, but from a, a spectator's perspective, people that don't watch jujitsu would never ever want to watch people no. dancing around, stalling, stalling. Even people or that do guard. like jujitsu don't, don't like it. Nobody I, wants to watch that. I find it difficult, especially now with what I'm seeing, and this is not directed at anywhere. And, these people just kind of sliding into each other, you right. know, as soon as this match, like not even, it's not even, we're not even getting grips now. We're getting grips on the slide. I know yeah, exactly what you're talking grips. about. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's tough. And, you know, to see now I know it's for the competition and I know we're doing this to win, to get to your strength as soon as possible. Okay. And if your strength is your guard or if your strength is your passing, then you want to get to that immediately. And that's where the strategy comes in, you know, and that it's a shame that that's kind of, overrates it but that's what happened with taekwondo don't you think the overall goal is to spread jujitsu as far and wide as we can is that what we're doing i, I don't know I'm that's asking. what we're hoping for <laughs> I, I, that's, I wonder, what, that's, that's what, what this i want podcast is about i want oh. i want as many people that can do jujitsu to do it as possible and i think one avenue is to have you know a fun sport to watch mma is fun to watch that's why i think it's grown it's helped it grow it's not the only factor but i think um a match that's fun to watch because nothing but help grow the sport Okay, that that I would agree with you too. And then, it's it's a, it's a tough double edged sword. It's a line, right? It's a balance. Right. You don't want to go too far in one direction. But I feel like we're we're on the silly side right now a little bit. Yeah, it, when when you for an average fan, for or an, an average, average I'm talking about right now. I'm just talking in, about the yes, average fan. Silly. If you are training jujitsu, like for us, we can always find something from these high level matches, even if they're boring. But we could find something, pick up technique. But an average watcher that doesn't know anything about jujitsu, they're watching us in 50 50 and they're just sitting there. One guy gets up, the other guy knocks him down. The other guy gets up, the other guy gets knocked down. <laughs> so you know, true. stuff like that. Like, yeah, what is definitely going changing on? the channel. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying, I, I throw out these silly rules. Just maybe something will stick. Maybe try it out. Well, the judo does that. They change their rules because they know what the, they've identified what the people like. The people want to see the, the big throw. So they're trying to, okay, no. They had an issue with the, the wrestlers when the wrestlers came in because they were doing the double leg and single legs. So they ruled that out because the, the people weren't doing the, the throws. That's what people want to say. You know, one of the reasons why I don't want, I don't want to say ignored, but ground is not really very strongly looked at as far as a recognition. I mean, people do win on the ground, but you see a lot of judo practitioners as soon as it goes around, they kind of look around or they look up at the ref. They're waiting know, for him to stand wait, back yeah, up. Yeah, waiting yeah. for you. You know what I'm talking yeah, about, yeah, you know? Yeah. And there's not really a, a very strong effort to stay on the ground and, and keep this keep this going. So 
they change the rules. They have that, you know, sometimes they, I don't know if they change the, the timing of the, um, how long they stay on the ground. I think it's like 15 seconds or something What do you like think that. about tournaments like EBI, Eddie Bravo's tournament? All right, now to correct me, those are the submission only ones, right? Right, and then they got the special overtime rules where you could start on their back or start with an armbar. So there's always going to be a finish. Somebody's going to get finished in this match. Right. Now, correct me if that wrong, in something like that, st- position does not matter at all. Like correct. they're they're okay. So that that I mean, I'm sure it's very rigorous. I'm sure you have to be in excellent stamina and conditioning and shape to do. But um again, that that's as far as martial arts is concerned, I I don't know. Um, if that's really what I'm looking for. Well, I feel like that's kind of helped push this leg lock thing has come up in the past couple of years. I feel like that tournament's one of the reasons because now leg locks is one of the easier ways to finish somebody. So right. now it forces people to just jump into leg locks. Now the leg lock right. has, has really evolved because of... But now there's a lot of people that are comparing leg locks to getting stuck in 50-50 or a double guard pull. Not everyone wants to see a leg lock specialist just go out and attack legs over and over and over. So that's a real thing. Hold on. The double guard pull, is that two guys pulling guard into 50-50? They might wind up in 50 50, no, but they it's two guys pulling yeah, they don't guard usually at the same time. Pull 50 50. They'll usually try That's to go. That's amazing. They'll try to go under each other and, and go upside down. <laughs> and you have, I think it's like 20 seconds that you can stay they've actually in really, that position. Yeah, they've really cracked down on the. They're not going to let them. They have the timers now. It's like 30 okay. seconds. If you guys both do, don't do nothing, they both get penalized. And they've recently double DQ'd people because of these kind of That's tactics. Right. Some See, very now, high level matches. That seems like. Ten years ago, if you said like this is what we're gonna have to worry about, they'd be like, "What are you smoking?" <laughs> and, you know, we gotta remember not to do the double guard pulls. <laughs> like, well, this is another reason why if you allow heel hooks in the gi, these fifty-fifty positions would start to open up because now we have another attack. To and do. this is Maybe somewhere I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Maybe something needs to be done. Something else needs to be done with fifty-fifty. Uh, now I. Because of what we were just talking about and the transitions and judo changing the rules and jujitsu with the guard pulls, I want to know, have you done any training with Travis Stevens and how do you feel about how he combines judo and jujitsu? He is a very huge innovator in both judo and jujitsu. And I've briefly um, had the honor of sharing the mat with him uh, very few times in Fort Lee. Um, we did a little uh, back and forth exchange on on side mount um, escapes, and uh, it's great to know, at least from my perspective, that our games, our ground games, at least. Again, I don't have the judo background to say I'm even close to him, but our ground games are very similar. So it makes me go, oh, thank God, <laughs> I'm doing the right. I'm, I, I got I got this I got this part right, you know. So that and uh, we had a great time exchanging a lot of ground ideas. And as far as stand up, uh, I did do uh two seminars of his and i took a class of his in fort lee and i think he's just way advanced and i just think that our bodies are different are very different and i just can't do at least now i i I, i'm I'm having trouble emulating or doing what he does is it a flexibility thing or strength he's got a very big step he steps from very Mm -hmm. far away um he he can hit and again it's just you know his jujitsu knowledge and it's just so extensive and his his muscle memory, but he can just do all of these moves from anywhere, you know, and just step in from close or far away, you know. So now, Ed, just to keep you up to speed, he I know is, who Travis Stevens oh, is. Right, he okay. the Olympics. I got that one. So right. do I. Thank God. Cool. <laughs> he, <laughs> some of the things that people have said about him is what gave him the advantage or the opportunity to win silver in the Olympics was because of the transitions in the throws where he transitions right to submissions. Now, hold on. Did he did it? I don't, I didn't see any of the Olympics. I'm going to say he just won purely on judo, but I don't know that for a fact. I'm just going to base that purely on. He definitely on, got a lot of chokes. He did. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. That That's great. That That's, I didn't know that. Tim, I did what? not watch all of it, but I again, didn't see any of it. What, I, was what I have, guessing. what people have said is it's because of the jujitsu. That okay, definitely. And uh, is it Ky- Kyla Patterson, Peter, Kayla Harrison? Thank jo- you, John oh Donner, <laughs> and John, and John. I think he trained with John a lot too. That's and with fantastic. us, we train with him. He, you know, he comes to. Uh, he's very close um, with an associate of mine, Alan Teo, and uh, he visits uh, Fort Lee pretty regularly. That's and, great. Uh, Chris Skelly, I think uh, they're very tight. So, so you were mentioning seminars. How about through your jujitsu career? How have seminars impacted your training? Going to seminars? Yeah, you go, you go to seminars. So, I, um, double-edged sword seminars just like anything else. Again, a lot of information, 
very short period of time. Usually you're at a place that you're unfamiliar with. So it's, you know, you're meeting a lot of new people. You know, it's very, a lot of uh, uh, distractions. So it's hard to remember and focus. So I usually just like, got to focus on one movie really like, you know, not the whole entire seminar, you know, on the next day I try to like, you know, okay, got to come back or whether I'm teaching or I have a lesson, I'm going to try and go over what we went over in the seminar and it doesn't always go so well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, and it's like sometimes, Hey Jamie, did you even go to this seminar? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, I will, uh, one of the best seminars I went to was, uh, taught by a girl. Fun fact about Jamie, where I learned a lot. Another great seminar was with, uh, Xandre Ribeiro, and that was in a very small school in rural Pennsylvania, and that was amazing because to have such a you know heavy hitter super all star, you know, and just randomly you know, you know you're here okay yeah he's doing a seminar I'm definitely I think <laughs> it was like fifty bucks, um, and then he trained with us it was great. Uh, trying to think of some other oh, I did a uh, David Adiv seminar that was pretty cool, but nothing again when you have Henzo Gracie you know teaching you from day one it's like. It's tough to say, you know, that seminar was like amazing when, you know, you're so desensitized. Yeah, so one, <laughs> uh, one of the things that Yanni brought up was the fact that privates or seminars aren't really the end-all be-all. The end-all be-all is to really drill and train and get to work in with your training partners as opposed to the knowledge itself. I would say drill and learn as much as you can because this is a learning about your body and what you can, what you can do and what you can't do and when, what you're limited on and what you're abundant on. And that's pretty much life. In, in general, you know, if you take that application of doing that and apply it to your life, you'll, you'll be okay. And, and same thing with jujitsu. So it's a fundamental teaching about yourself, you know, and that's, that's, that's kind of what you focus on. So do, you know, do what works for you. Um, I do believe in, yeah, drill, you got to, repetition is everything. Just like mind, you know, repetition, uh, being happy. How do you be happy? You got to practice. So you feel it's kind of the same way about privates? You didn't take many privates coming up? No, I didn't. I, I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to take a whole bunch of privates. I even, I wish, I did have a private with Henzo. I don't know what happened with it. Um, <laughs> I, someone got it for me, and I, I guess we just never did it. And uh, But again, you know, when you have him teaching you, it, it's like, what's he going to do? Just go over the same move that we went over, you know, which I'm still learning. But, you know, it's, you're so desensitized, you know, when you have such a great jujitsu instructor. Um, mostly, I owe a lot of my attributes for jujitsu is drilling and training like a maniac and training when you're exhausted like when you train for like an hour straight and then you just keep going and you just don't care that's how you learn when you just don't care about what happens that's that's what almost like your body like it is like a matrix thing it just takes a lot longer you don't get zapped into it you just have to have that where you don't even know you're learning jiu-jitsu but you're learning it because i find that i pick myself up things that i do that i learned you know going crazy with this guy after an hour at henzo's um exhausted and just remembering well that's what i did to him it worked i don't know why it worked because that was the technique that's that's what works that's when you're that's what you do when you're exhausted technique so what do you think about a lot you know i started in 2006 and ed wasn't far behind me and we started in the same school and back in 2006 the warm-ups were extensive before we started technique you were pretty tired do you feel that that made it easier or a better way to learn the technique learning I don't think you should be exhausted. I when I first started, I was of the the statue where I didn't want to be warmed up. I just teach me jujitsu. I can do. I lift weights. I do that all on my own. You know, just and that's how we did it. He was just taught us jujitsu. There was no push ups or warm ups. But again, starting out, I think you should just focus more on because it's such a different cardio. Like it's such a shock to your system. Like this shrimping. This this uh, sorry. This <laughs> this shrimping. Um, you know, all these different drills. Even if you're a marathon runner, you're still gonna be. This is exhausting because just the heart is just doing different things on the on the ground. So, um, so your thing is, you'd rather not be tired for the learning, but once you've done the techniques, now you push yourself in the rolling. Yeah, once you get going, then you can really start pushing yourself and really start. That's when you can learn about yourself. You know what you're doing. You have an agenda. Now you can start practicing. I think it's just too much of a of a distraction when you're when you're first starting and. You know, I, I believe the first thing you should learn is shrimping and break falling. You know, I may not always do that. Sometimes we'll do like De La Hiva, but, you know, a good instructor will teach you those things first. Seeing my students get very good at jujitsu is huge. That, that I might need to stay happy because that, that's one thing that I see, especially now as you get older and you see what you've developed and you see these, these killers and it's and it scares you like it scares me i get scared when i see these guys 
you know, doing what they're doing and how quick and how they react. And I'm like, you know, and I'm like, good, good thing that's not me, <laughs> you know. And that's what I'm saying to myself. And I'm like, oh my god, that's savage. Who taught these guys <laughs> jujitsu? And I'm like, dude, you did. I'm just, it, it startles me. But yeah, it, that, that makes me very happy. Most people might, that are listening don't know Jamie Cruz. Can you just give him a quick rundown of all the black belts that you have? Just a few of the names you uh, have. Oh, wow. Um, okay. John Birdman Finn, my first one. Um, we got Jim Miller. We got Dan Miller. MMA fighters famous. You know them, Dave? <laughs> uh, got, yeah, I think I do. We got Jonathan Helwig. You know, I've been training with him recently. At his at John? MMA, yeah. Oh, nice. He makes me feel like yeah. I am a little kid rolling. Yes, he, he makes everyone feel like dominates a me, and it feels so good. I yeah. like I like it because not everybody can dominate me, especially when I come here. David gives me basically <laughs> nothing, so it feels no, good to be. I humble. rely on my <laughs> blue belts to dominate Ed. Ed picks on them for making grips that they shouldn't make, and the next thing you know, he's on his back. I don't even know what you're talking about. He Ron just likes to make specifically. Stories. We got Yanni. We got glory. He's my he's my personal favorite. I think I'm a y- little biased. <laughs> Yanni's the man. Yanni Yanni's the Godfather. He's like the 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 Yoda of Jiu-Jitsu, The 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 Donaher of New Jersey. I guess I don't Donaher know. Donaher of New Jersey. <laughs> I like the Yoda for there's, Jiu-Jitsu. We can make a picture with his face on Yoda. We yeah. Still t-shirts. There's so many <laughs> nicknames for Jiu-Jitsu. We always had so many nicknames at at Henzo's of uh, these characters. Red Man. Johnny Tsunami, and they're they're all. I think they're all still training now. Actually, it's just amazing to see that they're still there. And every time I go back there, they're just all respect. You know, so it's such a good experience. Can you talk on some of the camaraderie that's going along your jiu-jitsu career? Some of the fun you've had, even before or after training, not even the training itself, just the people that you've met. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Not yeah, Vegas, not I mean, Vegas. Just the <laughs> trips, Vegas trips. Uh, we did a we did like a kind of a group thing where we went to uh, we all competed in the Pan Ams. And we all had our little way of going. Some drove down, some flew down. Uh, me and uh, one of the guys from the gym, we took a bus, and that was just a bizarre experience. Like a, <laughs> it's like a whole different subculture that that uh, does these Greyhound bus trips. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was a lot of it was it was fun. And then um, what else did we do? The Brazil trip was great. Um, uh, we did a lot of road trips. Uh, there was always dinner. There was always uh, br- uh, Brazilian barbecue, Uh We did a lot of uh, this place in Hack that place, Greenfields, I think it was in Hackensack. We used to hit that place. We had Matt Sarah there a couple times. Um, you know, just partying. You know, <laughs> good times. Uh, How about the day to day stuff? I've seen you post pictures of like that little karate man, and you guys just goofing around on them just day to day. The the the, the, uh, the dummies? What do you mean the dolls? You have this little uh, figurine that you usually take pictures of every once in a while. They used to put up on the internet. So one of them is is I think is is Hickson, and one of them is me. Oh, I didn't yeah, even know. I, yeah, wasn't even well, I thought they were just random karate figures. Yo, no, those are jujitsu. They got the jujitsu gi. They got the one's got the the red tassel thing with right. the stripes on it, or whatever that thing is called, and uh, they're like my. Uh, alter egos, you know. I live vicariously through them, you know. So I'm sending messages when I when I oh, post. you're sending yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm trying to talk, trying to talk to you guys, you know. And what are you form. trying to say to us? You got to read. It depends on which one. I'm gonna have to go post. back. You got to go back and, and look at the posts. You got to each one has a message. He's trying to mind control us. Yeah, I see that. Subliminal yeah, subliminal messaging. It's it's a fight for the mind. That's what this is. So you just brought up uh, some of your possibly more famous black belts, the Miller brothers. Right. Uh, now you train them. F- did you train them specifically for MMA as they were under you, or did you train them in jujitsu in general? Jujitsu more in general. They had a lot of different coaches. Um, again, boxing. They ha- they even got as far as having a, a BJJ. Uh, Brian McLaughlin uh, took care of the uh, jujitsu for MMA, which was really very sound, a very good program. Um, mostly, I just wanted to get them really getting flow jujitsu like good sound which is what they do um i really wanted them training with the gi you wanted yeah them gi. i did you think that sharpens it like to do both? yeah I, I really think it does i really think it does plus i would I, I think they they would have been amazing gi competitors too right you know you wish but, they would have uh, switched their path no i wish they would have done both they both they yeah. better. <laughs> maybe they would have been world do, champions do, do gi, do, yeah you never know do uh do gi jujitsu and do mma cool. you know that's a lot that, that's that's an amazing amount of uh that's the tough part about MMA. you really have to pick and choose your time is so valuable yeah and and your your body is only gonna t- you know again like i know how you, got, you just can't do it sometimes you know like your well back, that's a little bit knee. easier on your body when you're doing the gi there's a little less 
I feel like when you're doing no-gi, it's a real fast pace. There's a lot. Yeah. very slippery. Maybe headbutts happen a little more often than they do in the gi. The gi's a real slowed down pace, and you kind of get stuck a little bit more, and you have to maybe think a little more. Yeah. I don't know. Um, sometimes it gets fast paced. It depends on you. I see a lot of fast gi matches. Again, I haven't seen a match recently in a while, but I remember that. It's like, dude, this gi pace <laughs> is crazy. So now Ed does not like no gi training because he relies on his strength and his weight slowing people down. I like a slow pace. Very yeah, slow. I like to hang on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hang on. <laughs> I'm that way too. Hanging on. See? Hanging on. Hang That's on. right, baby. We're going to have to get you playing some worm guard and lapel guard. That's a really Maybe. good way to hold on. Well, recently we were talking to Yanni about worm guard and lapel guard, and he's not too keen on it. He doesn't really think that's the future of where it's going. He kind of thinks it's more of a fad. I might be putting words in his mouth, but I think – that's the key to me getting the black belt. Is maybe if I learn something that he doesn't know and I could use it on him, maybe he'll give me a black belt. Maybe you can teach it to him, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> I need some kind of trick. One of the instructors at um, Henzo Gracie Woodland Park, uh, Dan Rothman, he does a whole series on worm guard and then incorporates it with the very old school simple move arm bar or a simple move open guard sweep or some move razor arm bar and can do and it's just amazing how he kind of like took new school old school i'm more old school I, I admit it i stay i don't do a lot of what's going on now i try maybe i do my own version of it you know but it's still my game is probably not going to change that much you know i might evolve it has changed a little bit but he takes both aspects and it's just really cool to watch you know because he's more of an old timey guy you know he's not as old as me but you know he's from that generation right you know and now he's doing a lot of the new stuff and it, and it works and it's, and it's really doing cool you guys should if you ever get a that's kind of one of the, the temple i want to do because my, my game is very old school i do right. a lot of butterfly guard a lot of half guard maybe some x guard and I, I just focus on all frames and stuff i don't really step outside my box this is kind of outside my comfort zone so i think it's kind of like your judo like the right yeah. thing for me to learn if i could find the right people to show it to me <laughs> but Yanni's not going to show it to me, which is a problem because he showed no, he, he doesn't know anything. So I would never learn anything from. So him. wait, Ron, do you do Ron. you do Dave? Do you do the the new school? Yes, we you do. do. Yeah, Worm absolutely. Guard. I have a student that brought it in here, and when he started playing it on, you me, didn't chase him out. No, no, I, I should have <laughs> chased. I should have chased him out because he's a no good human being. Maybe but if he was good at it, you would chase him out, but he's not good. He made me really rethink the whole thing because when he started playing the worm guard or different lapel guards, I was really stuck, and I was like, okay, now I have to learn this because I have somebody playing it, and I can't just let him use this on me and me not know what to do. Yeah, do you ever get nervous that like people will come with to questions and they'll be like, and you'll be like, Whoa. I've so far. I've never had a question I couldn't answer, and I always believe in applying the answer. Like, okay, you know, we have to go and get on the mat, and you have to put me in the move, right. and I can I'll, I can show you what I would do to get out. And it's, it's I've never had like a okay that was you know that was n that was not the answer. It's always been the correct answer. Um, so, no, you know, I I I, uh, I just can't see like. I don't know. I uh, well, I think I can help you out here. One of your main claims of fame is very fundamental aspects of your game, right? You do very advanced fundamentals, right? And if you attack these guards with just good fundamentals, you keep your elbows in, you don't let yourself get separated head over your hips, you can kind of pass through these kind of guards. Correct. I I, I think a lot of people get into a lot of trouble with jujitsu is when they, it's like fighting fires, you know. And mm -hmm. if you have three or four fires, you know, it's getting too late. Right, you, know, you, gotta, you can't. Yeah, you're you letting a lot of you can't value. multitask that much. You yeah, gotta get rid of the fires earlier, the better. Exactly. So I think it's a, it's an ego thing where you say I'm okay, I don't have to deal with that, and then you do keep doing with your agenda, and you did have to deal with it, but now it's getting worse. And it's like no, I still I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do, and you can I, you can literally translate. That's what's happening when I watch someone w where it goes wrong in jujitsu. Like, you didn't take care of that. Yeah, they're that, not addressing that, they, that they, grip. You just yeah, let them grab. Right, they're not. <laughs> you this know? is one of the main things. This is why you're not good, because you don't recognize the danger early enough. I do. Jamie obviously does. You do. You recognize <laughs> the danger early enough. Then why are blue belts able to sweep you? <laughs> one out of 100 sweeps, that's not, doesn't count. Listen, I smash I'm going to record it. We have it here. I'm going to show Jamie afterwards. There it is. I'm going to play the video <laughs> for him so he can see exactly what's going on. Every time he's Ed th talks th a big game. Can you okay? stop? Let me talk for once. No, I'm talking right now. You're going to have to stay quiet and listen. All these I'm going to unplug your microphone. Jamie, I, I hold all these memories deep, and they are what fuel they me. they come out. Did you watch any of the Michael Jordan documentary that's going on right now? No. He meant to say Michael Jackson. No, Michael Jordan oh. was always a killer. He never took a game off. Even if it was an exhibition game that did not count, he went as hard as he could 
because that's his mentality. That's what I'm going to do to Dave. I'm not going to take it easy on him. I want to dominate that's him fine. as hard as possible. That's what I want. I'm wanna, waiting for you to get in shape so you can really push me. The only problem is we talked about this is Corona. We're going to wait till Corona's over. That's right. Corona. I keep forgetting about that. I I swear to God, I did forget about it. Like, why haven't they just done this? Coronavirus. So once it's over, I'm going to give him one month after the date we're open to train. No, you get one month, and then at that one month, we're going to go, we're going to videotape, we're going to have all our, your friends and family, and I'm going to embarrass you right in front of them. What? And again, once again, Yanni already has his next I don't student know. We, lined up for me. When I tap Ed out, hmm. he's sending out his next student it's because he doesn't belt. want the it's embarrassment. It's a blue belt. Is that the blue belt that swept you? No, no, no this is no, what we don't talk about. He thinks oh. he's going to win. He's, he's gonna delusional. Win. He's delusional. I'm going to win. You think he's not under Yanni. I am. So I'm not under I Yanni. have a humongous advantage. Yeah. Yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> He's still going to help you because he's a nice I'm guy. I'm partially now under you, Yanni that I go there <laughs> occasionally. Do you? Tra- where do you train? you train mostly here? I, or? Tra- I train here, and then I, I was going to Yanni on Fridays until just yeah. kids' sports Basically, got Basically, the, the, okay. the past 365 days, you went to Yanni's maybe two times. I was going to Yanni's every Friday regular, but yes, uh, once my kids' soccer and my wife was coaching, I had to stop He's a big-time excuse maker, so after I win, he's going to come up with... He's already he's building gonna, excuses. Soccer, there's no excuses. Yeah, yeah, soccer win. was involved. Yeah, that's yeah. why I couldn't train. You know, you have kids. It gets yeah. difficult. Yeah. It's ice skating for me. No, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie wins, though. That's the difference. He could he could have all the same stuff happen and then just come in and just dominate. You don't yeah. have maybe that. He, maybe he won't, though. Yeah. Maybe I should challenge him next. Yeah. I already I challenged him. I would love it. Yanni put me on the spot, and I had to challenge him. Who, Yanni? Yeah, I challenged him, too. <laughs> Yanni, it's, d- it's a different. Rule I gotta set. listen to Yanni's podcast. Yeah, you should listen. I, I should have listened to these before I. The came first in. question we ask him <laughs> is who he thinks is gonna win, and he said me. That's not what we asked him. That's the we first question. Who's better at jujitsu? No, that was uh, that was last podcast. I'm talking about the first one when he was on. He no, said, you said who is? I'll play it right now. Your exact question, Yanni. Who is better at jujitsu, Ed or Dave? The last podcast was Yanni. Who's more technical? And then he Whatever. paused, and he was not able to give you an answer. Yeah, you know Yanni. He's super yeah. nice, yeah. not confrontational. Right. He doesn't want to embarrass him like I do. He doesn't <laughs> have the same lust for embarrassment. I want to make Lust. you... They, yeah, he <laughs> knew <laughs> you would feel bad about yourself. It was the same reason like that he had to him. wrap the yeah. blue belt around <laughs> your waist blood. first. You weren't the most deserving, but you would have quit if you didn't get it first. I was a kid when I got my blue belt. 21, basically, I was a different person. I'm a father now. I'm more mature. I Are know. you more mature? I'm not so sure. All right, I'm a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, now that we're on the topic of daughters, we all right. have daughters. Yes. Has that changed your perspective on jiu-jitsu in any way? No. Uh, maybe just um, encourage more jiu-jitsu because I do want to teach to her, and I want her to learn jiu-jitsu and become good at it and enjoy it. I don't want her to become obsessed as I did, um, as but that's part of it. You know, If you want to be good at anything, you almost have to be obsessed. So she comes to you at 16 and she says, Dad, I really think I want to make this a career. I want to make my living off jiu-jitsu. How would Ooh. you feel? I would, say, I would say awesome. I would say that's great. It's a great start. Uh, just know that you know, you're going to want to have something else. You know, I, I honestly believe uh, you know, our lifespans and you know, we definitely can do two, three, maybe even four occupations or professions. You know, we really have that much in us. And I think we do ourselves a disservice. I think that's a lot of uh, the issues with uh, humanity. And, uh, you know, just someone does something for 30 years or 40 years and that's all they do. And then, then they retire and they don't do anything, you know, and then. Right. You, yeah. you think more yeah. different types of challenges kind of round you out. Right. As you exactly. Exactly. Um, I don't know if I wanted to be, I think. Hopefully she be you know I'm sure every parent says that you know don't do what daddy does you know I guess I should I should be honored if she wanted to open up her own school and and uh, be a practitioner and and uh, train but um what if she all right let's go to the other side of this question she, she turns thirteen That's what my wife and she says. figures out about boys and makeup and she's uh-huh. like I'm done with this jujitsu my girlfriends don't like to get sweaty what do you think about that uh, you know as long as she didn't got proficient at it I don't think I, I have, uh, that day will probably come more louder than the that's other. the one I'm more louder than the other one yeah, you're that, that requiring her to be proficient at least before she quits though that won't take very long I think with me uh, I only need a, a good six months. And I think I could six just, months. Yeah. That's it. At, yeah. well, at the right what? age. At yeah, the right age. Yeah, at the right age. But just here, I'm not looking to you know win like uh, 
you know, some grappling tournament. Right, right, right. We're just looking to be safe on the just street. Just to protect yourself. Yeah, just yeah. to protect yourself. I, that's yeah. my main thing. My daughters are both too young right now to do jujitsu, but my ultimate goal is for them to at least train from like seven to maybe 12, maybe five years, just to get the muscle memory yeah. so that even at 18 or 20, maybe they haven't done it for five or six years, somebody touches them, grabs them, they have the muscle memory they in them. They know what to do. Right. Like, that's I honestly think she, she knows enough now, you know, if she stopped, they'd be like, okay, I mean, it's always going to be rounder. You know, right. I'm never stopping. Yeah. So. Well, she's always going to have it in her face. <laughs> right. And that's a, that's another thing. If you never stop and you're always training, she'll always kind of gravitate back towards exactly. jujitsu. Exactly. That's yeah. kind of what one of our, our friends, I'm not going to mention him, but his daughter was really into it from like about nine right. to maybe 15. I'll and say then her name. That's, see, that's a long time. That's yeah. A, no, no, she's very good yeah. at jujitsu. But, you know. The things I said come up, and then if your friends aren't doing it, it's harder to stay in. Friends it. are everything when you're a kid. Yeah, I yes. realize that you. It's a big. That's a big competition right there. You gotta compete with that. But you're if she lose. if she stepped <laughs> on the mat right now, you know, I wouldn't have. I would have to try. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no, and that's know. that's what I'm looking for. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I try and tell my son this same lesson because right now jujitsu is his favorite thing. It's jujitsu and soccer. It's the only things that he loves. And I tell him all the time, man, I'm happy to be rolling around with you right now because you're going to hit an age where you realize there's girls and you're not going to want to do jujitsu anymore. And he's always like, no, dad, that's never going to happen. <laughs> so I'm cute. like, buddy, just <laughs> wait. Well, it might not. I mean, you could have jujitsu and girls, I think, you know, you might take, you might take a little bit of a you know, as long as for him, you know, you should have this conversation with him. You know, priorities are going to change and shift. And, you know, you're not going to do jiu-jitsu as much, you know, because there's girls. I try mm -hmm. this. I, it's just the way it is. He's set right now. <laughs> he's young still. It moves mountains. It really does. Well, you should keep telling him it's going to happen. Maybe he'll just, to spite you, he'll be like, no, look, I still train. You yeah. should keep telling him. That would be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because when he turns 18, he's going to maul Ed for me. I don't know. I was thinking about this a lot. And... uh he would have to be close to a professional Maybe. to beat me because if I'm a black belt for – hold on, hold on. If I'm a black belt for 10 years, right, he's going to be training the next nine years. He might be close to black belt level, but I'll have been a black belt, and I know all the tricks because I'm going to help teach him. But you're going to be older, I'll be a little older. Fatter. The kid's nine years old hitting collar sleeve omoplatas. That's my move. He can't do that to you me. You better get better at it. <laughs> so look at it this way from your, from your son's approach. I mean, why does a guy do anything? You think it's four girls? Yes. We do anything to get girls. Jiu-Jitsu gets girls, I think. That's why he'll do Jiu-Jitsu. I met my wife doing Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> he met his wife exactly. doing Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> I don't think that it helped me at all, though. It's just the place that I met her. Yeah, even, more, even more. I mean, you know, it's weird, but a lot of people do things like that for unknown reasons. You think you're doing it for one reason, but you, you know, might have secretly done it subconsciously to meet your wife. Yeah. See, you gotta know yourself. Maybe you should start meditating, Dave. Yeah. What do you think about meditation? I do meditate. I love meditation. You don't meditate. But I, I think med meditate. I think meditation is different, very different than what other people think meditation is. I mean, people have meditation that you have to sit in a room, your internal dialogue and your conversation with yourself—that's meditation. So yeah. it's going on all the time. And so you don't. So you'll never just sit down and like. No, I'm I will. Oh, you I have will. to control okay. that meditation that's going right, on right, in my right. mind. Sometimes. Like you talk a little bit about ego today, and it's very important to kind of control it and not. Let all those judgments of other people in. Cause or you're mostly of yourself, I think, in a yeah. lot. But yeah, judgments in general of mm -hmm. yourself and of other people. You have to control that. that right, that, because that can steer you in very wrong directions. directions. Like, you can get scared. Like you were saying, like you're starting to change your mentality of because you're letting the, these judgments on top of you. Yep, not doing your true game. That's why I, I've seen it so many times where uh, a lot of Henzo's, I mean, anywhere I go, I'm sure it exists. Guy on the mat, he's just killing everybody. Like, and 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 then he goes and competes, you know, and 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 people are cheering him on, and his wife's there, and there's like everyone's watching, and the lights on, and it's just like, dude, did you? And I've done it, you know. Did you forget jujitsu? It's just like the weight of expectations <laughs> kind of holding I've him been down. The guy who did Jamie? Yeah. For, did he forget what to do? <laughs> <laughs> did he forget? So, so that's what you're talking about having the muscle memory drilling. So you're not drilling. even think. There's no thinking. You're just in the moment, and things are just kind of flowing through. Right. Which is right. what you mentioned before, Dave. Maybe you should take a page out of this meditation book. Hmm. Where can I find this book? <laughs> <laughs> Audiobooks online. Audiobooks. <laughs> the lever box. <laughs> so, where do you see jujitsu going in the future? Your future of jujitsu, and in general, do you see the continued evolution like these guards that we were talking about? Yes, I do see that, and I do see it getting um, more extent. Again, it's just going to be like every other. It's going to become very extreme, just like every other sport. Um, it will probably go the way down the taekwondo, but that's the beauty of it because 
at the beginning, you know, in the in the beginning of this MMA thing that was going on, Taekwondo was a traditional martial arts in general. I, I say Taekwondo. I don't know why I focus on that. Maybe because of my experience was not considered very good. Like you can't, you know, you're not going to want to fight. Grappling's where it's at. You know, that was correct. But now that there's an evil, an even playing field, and the Taekwondo guy now knows a sprawl, and now knows that this guy's going to try to take me down, and I'm going to be aware of it, and I'm going to knee him in the face. Yeah. My my kung fu near, or you know, now we're seeing a different story. Now we're seeing these crazy kicks you know happen like and these guys are getting knocked out you know so you watch mma now and it's just like dude it almost looks like a movie you know a good fight you know and then there's these other fights that are like dude i can't <laughs> take it anymore <laughs> <laughs> but now with the evolution of the stand-up you're also seeing these jujitsu guys starting to pull guard in mma so i i yeah and you see that and you see a lot of guys so um i want to say it was i don't know like again i'm not that savvy on the names and the guys but i want to say it was josh barnett who does these gi moves in mma like these gi guard moves where you got like, grabbing the wrist and grab like uh, almost like i i, I could have sworn I th- i'm pretty sure it was him or maybe some did a uh uh plot a sweep or something like look very much like that and I'm just like, dude, that's a, that's like a, a game move that he just did in MMA. And so that's what I think we're, we might start seeing. Well, somebody like Ryan Hall is like rolling mm-hmm. under people, like yeah. doing forward rolls, catching the leg and knocking them over and heel hooking them. It, uh, or what about that one guy? I mean, again, you see these fights every every time on Facebook where they're, you know, squaring off, looking to strike each other. And the one guy like slides in and hits a leg lock on him. Right. And then cranks it. And then That's what people now, are people are afraid to fight Ryan Hall like, because of this. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> this stuff's coming out of nowhere. Maybe that's that self defense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see it. So, you know, for every time I say, you know, that, you know, we can't go that direction or or you know, I used to think that uh you know, you don't cross the feet during the arm bar. Right. You know, you do. You know, just the right way, the wrong way. There's right. a, one, you could do it here, you can't do it there, you know? And it's just like, it's going to, things change. You know I what I mean? Like yeah. Everything he's saying is exactly what I do. Spirit I'm, animal. Spirit I'm regretting animal. bringing him in here as a spirit this animal. Is, this right is better now, than right? I could have ever expect. Two on one. Spirit animal. Jamie, I would love to show you the one thing I've ever innovated on my own is this arm bar break, and it involves crossing the feet. And I would love to show it to him. Uh, arm bar break, what you're getting in the arm bar? Like I'm on top, in side control. You're on top of them, and they're they got that figure four. Uh, arm bar defense and it's hard to, you know it's hard to break because okay. they put the hand behind the knee yes. well they put the hand behind the knee oh hard, okay yeah that one and specifically I like to cross my feet over their shoulder and pull suck them in with my feet and, and you're pinch on, my see knees. if you're on top I think yeah, yeah. on top yeah I, I, I yeah on the bottom I don't know if you could really get away with crossing knees because you have to really push them down and control their, their posture but that's why I don't do arm bars from the bottom because if it doesn't work on a big big guy I would rather just get on top and just do the same move over and over to finish right I'm I'm all about that too. Same Dave, move are you over and this? over. Dave, Same you're move. done. Over Ed's over. eyes are lighting up right <laughs> now, everybody. Done I think for. he has a new crush. It was Yanni. It might now no, be Jamie. No, but it's it's not an accident because I was really immediately the first class I ever took from Yanni. Immediately drawn to him. I knew this was the guy that's going to guide me, and you guided him, right? Which makes perfect sense why we're getting along See? together like this. There it is. I, I'm on the outskirts of that. Yeah, just <laughs> but you got to come to my level <laughs> here. Just listen to what I'm saying. Stop biting me on it. Stop but making wait a excuses. Second now. It's the same lineage. Why right don't here. I love him the same way you do? Because hmm. you're not technically in. Yanni has you know, any, any spirit belts. animal. Yeah, you, don't you have got no belts from Yanni. <laughs> so your spirit animal is a pig, then? Yeah. What's going no. on here? <laughs> on estrogen. You got to get somebody's got to draw an estrogen <laughs> pig with my face on it <laughs> that would be great <laughs> this was you fun, fun this was, yeah this was a good time thank, thank you for you. coming <laughs> thank even though you we really, yeah, we really angry at you no no we animal. really appreciate this we're trying to the whole purpose of this is to just get the whole community together we're not in competition with anybody right we want to just, just with hop- ourselves <laughs> well yeah just me and him are competing we, just, we want to be better and bring guys like you yanni george you guys were the pioneers and we want to give thanks to you and try to help push it forward and this is the best way we could do it because our skills aren't <laughs> well, up no, to this par. Is great for yourself <laughs> Well, if I can help you guys out in any way, just oh, we let me that. know. That'd be great. Thank yeah. you. No All right. So I'm going to shut this down. Thanks again, Jamie. You're the yeah, that That was so much fun. I really hope that everybody enjoys. And I am so excited. Ed, how did you feel about that? I feel like estrogen pig is too far. Too. It crosses some kind of line. I didn't say it. 
it was said by the grandmaster. Grand grand. Grand grand. <laughs> well, but he, Jamie thought Ed was a pig. No. Well, maybe, but he also thought this pig would win, and he really enjoyed himself, and he can't wait to see the match. That's right. He he. I really am just surprised at how much fun we had with him. I was tickled pink. <laughs> <laughs> so, for anyone that's going to create any artwork for us, we would really like Wilbur from Charlotte's Web, bright pink, food hanging out of the mouth, and anything else that might indicate this pig was on estrogen. All right. So, we'd like to take a minute and thank our sponsors, Core BJJ. You can find them at corebjjnj.com or on all social media at corebjjnj. And Jamie is currently on Instagram. You say it for me? <laughs> at shiva underscore waza that's shiva s-h-i-v-a underscore waza w-a-z-z-a or you can find where he's teaching at henzo gracie woodland park all one word at henzo gracie woodland park you okay there you got that you got yeah hairball hairball mid word sentence so I now know, we have to thank is. dennis and rob for the music for this episode and possibly future episodes Make sure to let us know what you think of the music. Thanks, guys. Yeah, but people that say To the Death should be like hardcore, the first song's hardcore, that's not what we're going for. When we're talking, we're not hardcore. We only had one person say that. But I know other people are thinking it, To the Death. No, because this is not about dying. Exactly. So let make the music could be a little poppy. Pop, that... Dennis's music is not poppy. It's a it's, rock. It pop. reminds me of like butterflies in springtime. That's what pop is. He did. He hit it, the nail on the head. Listen to me. I'm not angry at the music. You want reggae? I just. I don't know reggae. Hip hop. I listen. I don't R&B. know music. I've exactly. already said I don't. You know don't music. like music, so how come I can't? That's just why pick? we let the people decide. I don't like that. I want the control. Oh, he's such a control freak. I really don't understand. I've specifically requested things be removed from the podcast and he laughs and says no that'll be in. that's not true that's 100 percent true i've taken out everything you've said so all of our future guests be careful what you say no. because ed is in charge you're gonna talk down to me like this yes right now after the match i won't be able to <laughs> you gonna challenge me again no i'm not gonna re-challenge not until i'm ready <laughs> what if you're never ready i'm ready i'm what ready if, right now what if i listen to you i take you serious what does that mean and i put in the work and I finally lose the weight. I am a little concerned right now because you have been getting extra rolls in general with a complete animal. Are you going to rat me out? Is that We talked about this already. No, we haven't. I haven't said who it is. Is that a problem? Don't say who it is. I'm not going to say who it is. This is hypothetical. Hypothetically, Ed might be rolling <laughs> with a Greek god. All right, there we go. Yeah, now people can figure out who That's it is. That's too much then. Too, well, then you take it out. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm trying to get back in shape. Just for my own self. I don't need to... Round pack. is a shape. Well, that's it. Isn't it? Are you going to give us... I want to hear your sound off today. I've been liking the way you're doing it, and I want to hear a good one. What do you have for us today? Make sure you guys follow, like, subscribe, Buzzsprout, To The Death Podcast, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcast, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Podbean. There you go. <laughs> Some other stuff. I can't remember all the names of them, but everything is at... To the Death Podcast. Also, email us to the Death Podcast at Gmail. Twitter.com. Nobody's following us t- on Twitter. Just make a Twitter account and follow us. I said all social media, including Twitter. But we never mentioned Twitter. Because it's included in social media. But Twitter's cool. You can find out all the stuff. <sighs> News. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say <laughs> anything at all. What else do we have? Okay, so this was episode seven. What were we talking about? I don't know. Should we tell the people who we're going to hear oh, next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next week, we have unbelievable guest. Dave, I'm going to have to thank you personally for getting this done. Oh, you're quite welcome. When you first mentioned that you would try to reach out to this person, I said, you're crazy. Go ahead. Nothing's going to happen of it. And I can admit that I was completely wrong. We would really like to thank this person. Are we saying who it is? No, no, no. no, We can't release that information yet. But we would really like to thank this person. You know who you are. Thank you for being a fan. And thank you for coming on to the Death Podcast. Thank you for being a friend. (laughs) And he ruined it. Okay. I agree with you. Fantastic. Can't wait to see you guys next week. This is To The Death Podcast.